Hey, welcome to the shop. So thank you for joining me for another episode where we'll explore some of the finer points of flux cord arc welding. Now when you first get set up to run any kind of welding process and you're brand new at it, you set up your machine to the best of your ability and go and run a weld. And when you finish, you put up your hood, you're looking for something that looks something like that, you know, even and consistent, everything's tied in. But what you see is something more like this. What went wrong here? Well, take a look as I run these welds and see if you can put your finger on it. Now here's the first weld that's not going very well. It's often easier to see on the screen here what's happening than it is looking through the hood when you're first starting out. Here's the weld that's going a lot better. Do you see the difference? Let's talk about it. I'm sure you picked it up. I was traveling much more quickly with the weld that didn't fill in than I was with the weld that filled in nicely. And you might be thinking, okay, so is that the point of the video that uh, you need to travel more slowly? Well, that might be some good advice for most beginners to follow, but that's not what the video is actually about because this is a symptom of a bigger problem that almost everybody has when they start out. And that is being able to actually see and visualize your weld puddle. Let me relate to this to something that's a little bit uh, easier to visualize, and that's painting. So I was over at my buddy's house the other day, and he was talking about painting cars. That's what he does. And he was interested in getting involved in some welding. After talking to him for a few minutes, it kind of became clear to me that the variables that matter in painting, such as the angle where you hold the gun, how far you are away from your workpiece, and how fast you're traveling, are pretty similar to welding. So watch here as I run a little bit of spray paint and I'm moving too quickly, you can see it's not filling in, where if I slow down, you can see it's filling in nicely and I'm getting a good even coat of paint. I don't close my eyes while I'm painting, I watch as I paint and see how well it's filling in and make adjustments on the fly, get that rapid feedback. And that's what happens when you learn how to see your weld and I'm gonna show you how to do that. Let's go back to those first couple welds. While on this first example, I am pointed pretty close to the joint and following along at a fairly steady rate, I never did see a weld puddle form consistently between the two like I can here on this better example. See that weld pool? That becomes the weld. So you can see the shape that it's gonna be right uh, out of the gate as you make it. You can see that slag that follows along behind it too to cover everything up. While you need to be able to see the actual joint and follow along it, the weld puddle is the place to focus your efforts so you can make fine-tuned adjustments to your technique as you move along. Actually, flux core is one of the harder processes to see your weld puddle, in my experience, because you have a really bright arc and you're trying to point that at the joint and watch where you're going, and you also have slag that fills in over the top of your weld puddle. It's kind of like a scratch or a dent on your car. You might not notice it for a long time, but once you see it, you're going to see it every time. And that's why in my online courses, we go over so many exercises on flat plate before we ever move on to joints because it's an opportunity to really learn and see your weld. So here's what you do. Here's a good exercise. You line up on a flat plate. Try to use the best technique that you can from what you've learned to maintain the right angles, to maintain a good stick out or distance from the workpiece to the gun. Also try to travel consistently. But focus in on seeing that weld puddle right here, like you see here. Hopefully you can see it with the slag following. Try to see that while you weld. You might not get it on the first time, but that's okay, because here we have a whole plate. We can jump right into the next exercise, and that's welding a whole pad of beads where we cover the plate. This is a really common exercise in welding school and one we do in my online courses where running those over and over again not only builds that muscle memory and technique, but also trains you to be able to see and recognize the weld puddle. To see that different from the slag, to see it differently from the arc, and get that down so that when you move on to weld joints, it all kind of sinks in a lot easier. So if you want to train yourself to do that, go get some material, run some beads along it, pad them all the way down, and make sure you can see that weld puddle. And then once you can, you can move on to the different types of weld joints. And then as you run them, you'll see that weld puddle fill in. And there won't be any surprise. If it's going poorly, you're gonna know that when you're running the weld, you're not gonna have to look up afterwards and be surprised. So go ahead, give that a try. 
Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time.